Well, good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host today, as we are absolutely delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women, women Lead webinars are designed for you, a professional leader in business, whether you are an aspiring women leader or a woman leading people or projects or teams or companies. Our goal is to select topics that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. A few logistics about our webinars. Our webinar is just shy of one hour, and our thought leader today is ready to share some fabulous insights and ideas on detox is not a lifestyle, correct? It is, <laughs> our, it is our a whole lifestyle. Focus, yeah. It is a lifestyle. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eva. I'm delighted to introduce our thought leader today because I think as professional women, so many of us don't do enough in relation to self-care. We're busy doing what we do in the state of busyness, but we really don't focus in on, on our, our lifestyle and who we are. So I'm delighted to introduce our thought leader. One little note on the logistics. At the half hour mark, for all of you that are jumping on board and you are here as our guest today listening in, we're going to be answering any of your questions that you've submitted online during the present, um, after the presentation portion of our webinar. So at about the half hour mark, we will open up and so feel free to put your questions in in our little chat box and our Q&A box as you're jumping on. And Eva, I know, will be very excited to answer your questions and we'll um, open that up here at about the half hour mark. So. Based on our topic today, which I'm very excited about hearing about because I think so many of us need to focus on self-care, Eva Venari is the founder and owner, and we were laughing today, she's also the chief big dog <laughs> of, of self-nutrition. And I have learned now self stands for something, I'm going to let Eva tell you about it, but she is a native to Los Angeles. And here's a little bit of Eva's background, which is why I feel like this topic is one very important to her, very near and dear to her, and why you should know that she's coming from a very specific place. But Eva, Eva became ill with a multitude of conditions that doctors couldn't track down or help cure. She overcame chronic fatigue, depression, insomnia, heart palpitations, low, low blood pressure, foggy thinking, fibromyalgia, and infertility through nutritional balancing using hair mineral analysis. And I think hair mineral analysis is going to be a key piece of what Eva is going to talk about. Having witnessed the effects of medications on herself and her loved ones, it became apparent for her need to show others what her best kept secret can do to reduce stress. We all want that and also to reverse the signs of premature aging, and that is when she opened Self Nutrition in 2011. Through specific supplements, energy healing, lifestyle modifications, and food for fuel, she works with individuals on their health journey. Um, this is a quote from Eva, when we know better, we do better. Great quote. And she also says that's why we test the hair. So I would love for all of you to welcome aboard our thought leader today, Miss Eva Venari. So Eva, it is all yours, my dear. Thank you, Michelle. I, I love this subject. This is my absolute favorite subject because so many people that I run into, they say, oh yeah, Eva, I'm doing a flush. I feel so great. Or, you know, it's, I'm doing a 10 day detox, but we're going to find out today why that's only a short term solution and how the lifestyle that we lead and the little things that we do that add up from day to day have an accumulative effect. So it's not just about flushing that detox is, or it's not about a quarterly or even an annual thing. It's a lifestyle. So let's jump in. All right. There we are. Who is Eva? And you heard a little bit about what it is that I'm doing here is I became sick, very sick at a very young age. And I can remember having depression at the tender age of 13, not really knowing why. And the doctors didn't really understand. And it kind of became, it's an invisible illness. And I think a lot of people at all kinds of ages, if you don't have your arm in a sling or your leg in a cast, or you're not in a wheelchair, then people automatically think, Oh, you're fine. But there's a lot of things going on in the body that we can uh, not see, but we can feel the effects of. 
And until there's some proof, some evidence that says, yes, this is what's wrong, um, or here's what you, your body needs, it's, kind of, it's really hard to put, pinpoint and say, say this, this, is the, this is the issue. And for me, it was a multitude of issues. And it took me until the age of 36 to find nutritional balancing. And because I was blessed with insomnia, I was up at three o'clock in the morning doing all of my searching, you know, some of us do when we're sick and we're tired and we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, we, I was looking for all of these symptoms and how they could be related. And I came across an article about adrenal burnout, copper toxicity, and overall toxicity of the body and how, how we build up all of the toxins in our life over time. And it became very clear to me, I need to get my hair tested. I need to find out what's going on in my body. And then that gave me the roadmap to be specific. But for a general sense and for our audience today, I want to be able to give you something that you can start doing now. So let's talk a little bit more about what detox is. And what you're going to learn today is detox and nutrition, their link, how they come together. They're not separate from each other. That's an important thing. How the body heals. So when does it heal? How does it heal? And what can you do naturally? The five things we're going to talk about today to do that while you're working, while you're driving, while you're sleeping, all of these things, we're going to see some things. Okay. I have a hotline on my website and a lot of people call me and the first thing out of their mouth is a sensation of they're conveying the idea, I have a lemon of a body. You know, when we talk about lemons as cars, it's something that doesn't work. We get it off the lot, we, we drive it around and then it doesn't work and it doesn't work and it doesn't work even after being fixed several times. And people, when they have it happen to their body, they get this sensation that, oh my God, I maybe got in the wrong line for a body when I was getting, when I was getting one. And that's really not the truth. If your body is breathing, and I really want to hone in on this, if you're breathing, if you're alive, it doesn't matter in what condition, if you are still alive, your body is functioning. It's working. It may not be in the way that you prefer, but it is working. And that means it's not too late. Okay. So you're not saddled with a body that isn't working. You're, you're just unaware of what it needs. So let's talk about what it needs. And a lot of times we get caught up in the, I don't know what it needs. So talking about self-care, isn't there an awful lot of information out there, out on the web, in commercials, um, billboards, emails? We all get the spam talking about all oh, the latest and greatest thing. Try this fruit, try this serum, try this shake, try this whatever, you know, and it's, it's going to be just what you need. And maybe we try it. Maybe we try the first five or six things that we think are, are resonating with us. And they give us some relief. They give us some temporary relief, but they don't give us a long-term relief. And what we're looking for is something that can not just stop the pain now, but that can stop the pain long term and keep it from coming back. So we want to have the information, but we don't know which one's right for us and which one's not. And that seems to be a very common complaint with a lot of people that I run into. Okay. And I want to talk about detox as a general rule. I think we use that word, we get very complacent about using it. Oh, detox. We really don't know what it means. We don't know what it looks like when we are detoxing. We don't know if it's working until maybe you get some diagnosis. Maybe it's cancer or maybe it's a chronic condition that comes up. And you're like, wow, I thought I was detoxing. I don't know what's going on. You know, and how do you tell for sure? Well, we, that's what the hair analysis does. And so we can take a little bit of your hair and just cut it at the root of the hair so we can get current information of the scalp rather. And then it gets sent to the lab. And in about two weeks, I hear back with a 22 different levels of mineral and toxic metal report. And it's not a representation of everything that is in the body. In fact, it's not what's in the body at all. It's about everything that you're taking in, all of the diets, all of the food, all of, you know, everything you drink, what sits against your skin. And we forget about this one the most, you know, what do we wash our clothes in? And that sits against our skin all day long. We absorb it. And so the body then takes in everything that it needs through all of these different forms. And it doesn't have a judgment against whether or not something is good or bad for us. It uses whatever it can in whatever way it can 
in order to keep you alive. And that's what I meant. So you can get on board with, I'm breathing. My body is working. I just need to know what to give it. So taking up whatever you put into your body on a daily basis, whatever you're exposed to, even the emissions in the air that we breathe, you know, the body uses up what it can places in the body where you don't have the nutrient mineral that you need. It will use a toxic metal or a toxic chemical in place of that nutrient mineral. And that is what degrades your overall function of the body. So we're going to get into more details about that in a second. But detox is something that can happen as an ongoing basis. And I think you're kind of getting in the idea now. If the nutrition is there in our water and in our food, and we're taking care to eliminate as many toxins as we can from our environment, well, then we're not going to absorb it because the nutrient minerals are taking its correct place in the body. And that's really what we want to focus on. And it does take more than just 21 days. All right. So imbalance and nutrition. I hear this all the time. Oh, Eva, I don't need to test my hair. I don't need to do a, a detox cleanse. I don't need. And it's kind of like, and I got a picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa there for a reason. It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa being corrected by changing the stairs at the top to make it appear that it's level to the ground. And I don't know if you know this, but the Leaning Tower of Pisa took 300 years to build. So the first part, the first couple of, of stories, they started to build um, the tower and it started to lean just a little bit. And they noticed and they said, okay, well, we're going to stop. And we're not quite sure why it's leaning, but we don't have the technology you know, to continue building it. In the meantime, we're just going to stop building. So 100 years later, they built the rest, most of the rest of the tower. And then it really started to lean more. And I thought, oh, boy this is a problem too. And our bodies kind of are the same way. I want you to kind of hear how this is a similar story to what happens in the body because we're overcoming toxins all our lives and we're born with toxins and whatever imbalances our mothers had, they're passed to us in the womb. Lucky us. So, but not to worry, it can be corrected. And in the same way that the Leaning Tower of Pisa was corrected. So when they got to the top of the Leaning Tower and they had to quit for another hundred years, and then they finished off the last couple of rounds, they made the top stairs on the one side are more stairs than on the opposite side. And so while it appears to be level from the ground, the whole tower, of course, is leaning. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but they had to close down the Leaning Tower to visitors. Well, that, of course, puts a damper on visitors. And that's a big portion of Pisa's, you know, income. So they started a 10-year project to correct it. 10 years. And what they did was they built scaffolding up the side. And that would be your nutrition, right? So you're building up the scaffolding. And then on the side where it's leaning away, they added a ton of weights, like just like weights went all the way up to the, the, as much as they needed to support the leaning tower from falling over while they were replacing the foundation. So they scraped away the foundation from underneath the tower and they put new cement underneath. They corrected the lean, now not too much because they do like their tourism, and so that they could open it up and people were allowed up, not only you know, inside the tower, but all the way to the top again. So it's open and it's working. And this is what you can look forward to with a body that's functioning and it's strong. When its structure is strong, then we can deal a lot more easily with the stressors in our life. And I think we overuse the word stress a lot too. So let's see. What we want to do when it comes to stress is think about how it is that we're communicating. Not only I'm not talking about just communicating with the people around us. I'm talking about with our body. So we overuse the word stress a lot, and we think that it's the drama in our life. It's not whether or not you have a high stress environment at work, or maybe you're going through difficulties with your marriage, or maybe your kids are just acting up and you, don't, you, know, you can't quite deal with all of the energy it takes in order to overcome that. And so... What we do is it's about the body's response systems in the body. And, and I'm repeating in the body a lot because it really is all about the structure and how strong it is. The smart body, meaning the innate. The innate is the great communicator between everything in our body. So the more that we can tune into it, the more that we can communicate well with it, which is the hair mineral analysis test, so we can see what's going on, the better that we can tune into 
what the body needs. So here's an example of how it works. We know that everything that we have to do around the house or around the work, if we run out of time to do during the day, what happens to the projects left undone? They get put on the back burner. Same thing happens in the body. So we know how long each project takes. We know how, how much energy it's gonna to take to complete it. The body's the same way. So if you only have enough energy to get through the day with digestion, maybe with uh, the heart beating, with, the, bleed, with the, the, the blood going through the body and, and circulation and the breathing. So if we have just enough energy to do that, anything left over like healing gets put on the back burner. So the body knows what is on the back burner. It knows in priority what it needs to complete, in what order, how much energy the body needs in order to complete that healing. And it knows exactly where to get the energy from. So by tapping into what the body needs using a hair mineral analysis test, we can then provide you with these supplements that are specific. And I mean minerals, I'm not talking about vitamins or herbs. These are all just pure minerals you take with your, your meals. And so as the body starts to absorb in all of these wonderful preferred minerals, then it will start to pick the next item on its to-do list in priority. And just like when you download an app from your computer or onto your cell phone, it shows a zero to 100%. And when it gets to 100%, what happens? That application installs, okay? Same thing happens when the body heals. This is really cool. You never have to tell it what to do. That's why this is not a flush. It's not a pinpoint allopathic method of, I'm gonna go after this particular problem because the body knows in what order to do it. So as you start taking in these nutrient minerals and the body starts to collect the energy, the energy then accumulates for that one item that it wants to correct. And once it gets up to 100%, this is an even more awesome thing. The body does not stop the healing reaction until it's done. And I use the word reaction because it appears like you're getting sick with whatever it was that your body needs to clear. So maybe you have an old virus. And I'll give you an example. I had, and I told you I was sick, I had scarlet fever at the age of 20. Who gets scarlet fever anymore? And I was quarantined for six weeks and I was on heavy, heavy doses of antibiotics. And you would think with heavy doses of antibiotics, the virus would be gone. Okay, well, I told you I started nutritional balancing at the age of 36. At about nine months in to being on the program, I woke up with full blown reaction, what looked exactly like the scarlet fever. And if you've ever had a serious illness, you recognize it right away. And instead of the six weeks of you know, being quarantined, my body was now taking that virus and killing it, but it was active in my bloodstream while my body was getting rid of it. So <clears throat> the healing reaction was, as the virus was being, again, flushed from the body, it was active, and so therefore I had all of the symptoms, but I knew it was a healing reaction that lasted three days. And once that three days was done, the virus is gone out of my body and done forever. And I will never have that healing reaction again. And your body works that way. It goes through, it's not, it's not something that happens linearly. It's not, oh, well, I had this, you know, most, this uh, issue most recently. So then this is going to be happen, cured first. No, not at all. In fact, it's not a cure. This is just to reduce stress and help the body heal itself. Really, that's what it is. And the body does what it needs to do in the time frame that it knows it can do it. So if we can tap into that innate, why not? So it's about getting the information and learning more about the smart body. Okay, so let's talk about ways to detox the body now. A lot of us, uh, talking about the five different methods of detox, a lot of us drink water, but we don't drink enough. We don't drink the right kind. And we don't drink at the right time of day. And you're like, Eva, what's the right time of day? I'm going to tell you. So this is really funny. I recommend to my clients to drink at least three quarts of water a day. In fact, three quarts at the most, not three, not at least, but three quarts is the best amount. And the amount is important because if we're detoxing our body on an ongoing basis, and that's the idea here, and toxins are getting caught up in our kidneys and in our liver, but kidneys are the important part, right? Because that's where all of our blood gets filtered. 
if we do not drink enough water to flush out the kidneys from the toxins, then what happens to the kidney? Well, just like everything else, it has a backup plan. And if we don't flush the kidneys, the backup plan is to still flush, but it's gonna steal the energy that it needs to do so from your muscle tissue. So that's why you could be working out, eating the right foods, not losing weight and not detoxifying because we need to make sure that the kidneys are flushed. So how much? Three quarts. When? Between your meals. I sit down with people all the time who have their huge glass of water and they re refill it three and four times during that meal. And they're asking the waiter for more water, more water, more water. And it doesn't do anything good for your digestion to dilute the digestive juices. Okay. So almost every client I have ever done a hair analysis for digestion is so poor. And I can see that on a test because phosphorus levels and zinc levels are usually low. What I call the Na to K, which is the sodium to potassium ratio is usually low. And all of those points to very low digestion. So we can see specifically what's going on on the test with your body and how it's working and the kind of water. So it was a fad for a long time to drink alkaline water. That's not necessarily the best water to drink on a daily basis because where do we get our alkalinity? Well, let's talk about that. Alkalinity based on the, I remember talking about the preferred minerals of the body. Imagine each part of the body has maybe a recipe, right? So your brain has one recipe, your stomach has a recipe, your muscles have another recipe, right? And the minerals required for those particular parts of the body determine what type of alkalinity it should have or acidity. Because think about it, your stomach is supposed to be acidic. So is your brain, but your muscles are supposed to be alkaline, okay? So it's not coming from where, what it is that you're drinking doesn't dictate throughout the body what is alkaline and what is not. It has to do with your minerals. I can't dig that in enough, but that's important. So what is the best water? Spring water, good quality spring water. And there's a few brands that are better than others. So it's a matter of doing a little bit of research, but look for 100% of spring water, not the 5% that you might find in some major brands that are everywhere. And carbon filtered, not reverse osmosis. That's a whole different beast and that can demineralize you. You also do not want to drink distilled water not for very long anyways, not more than a couple of weeks at a time, because that too will flush out a lot of your loosely bound toxins, but then it will also start flushing out the nutrient minerals. And you don't want to do that. So spring carbon filter water, mostly between your meals. And that's, that's it on the water. And that will help you detox right away. Targeted massage. So I love my massages. When we're not feeling good, and I knew that, that for many years, if I had a massage, I could not feel the effects of it because my body was so out of balance. I had too much loosely, uh, it was floating around in my body was calcium. Well, calcium is a strengthening agent of the body. It's also a calming agent. It also belongs in your bones, not mixed in with your muscle tissue. And if it does get mixed in with your muscle tissue, it's due to an imbalance where something else is pulling it out of the bones. Usually it's copper or some sort of other imbalance that's causing that issue. That's what it was for me anyways. It was the copper that was very toxic in my body. And so if it is being pulled out of the bone area, then it's going to get deposited in a couple of different places. Um, muscle tissue being the main one. And that's when you end up with muscle soreness, stiffness, fibromyalgia, which I had and I was told would never cure from. Guess what? It's gone today. I don't have it. And then those of you who find yourself visiting the bathroom more frequently than you'd like, well, guess what? Calcium, when it's running around freely in the body and being pulled out of your bones, when it gets deposited into the bladder, it's an irritant to the bladder. You ever think about when you get scared or um, you go into that fight or flight, you need to cross the street and all of a sudden when you're when you're done with that moment of excitement, you gotta go pee. That's the reason. The body is getting rid of whatever makes it calm and says, let's get rid of all this calcium and it dumps it into the bladder and next thing you know, you gotta go. So all these things have a logical reason why, why the body works the way that it does. We just need to know about it and that's what I help with. So targeted massage, it should feel good. And the best place to massage yourself is on the soles of your feet. There's all this foot reflexology information you can do, but 
well, it's not necessary to become an expert in it. Really, if you were to take your shoes off, take your socks off, and just rub up near the toes, up in between the toes, and find those really tender spots. There's always one, especially if you wear heels. And then rub it until it no longer hurts. And you'll notice it takes three, four, or five really firm rubs. You know, they don't have to be circular. They don't have to be in one particular direction. Just rub it until it no longer hurts. And then reach around to the rest of the, of the foot, maybe the, the ball part, maybe the inner sole, maybe up near the heel. Find the tender spots and rub it out. Remember to do both feet. If you're really clever, then you'll sit on the couch with your partner and exchange feet and then do this while you're watching TV at night. So it can, it can be a fun little exercise. Or book yourself a foot massage and then you get your whole body massaged. And that's a great way to get the toxins out. Grounding. So we are of the earth. It makes only sense that we connect with the earth. And what does that mean? So the earth has a negative charge to it. As we go around throughout our day, isolating ourselves from the earth, then we build up a positive charge. This is called inflammation. And that's been a buzzword around four years. Doctors have been talking about it. Oh, you have inflammation of this, inflammation of that. Yeah, that's because we're not grounding ourselves well enough. You can ground for free. There's good, better, best way to do it. Go outside, find some wet cement, and that connects you to the ground. It immediately drops within three seconds. You can feel it. You'll drop the inflammation in your body. And within maybe 20 minutes, you do this daily, the inflammation can be gone. So my mother, she used to experience bad arthritis in her fingers. And I bought her a grounding mat because I wasn't going to have her sitting outside. And I says, take your shoes off 20 minutes a day while you're watching TV. Just put your feet up on this grounding mat. Six months later, she had forgotten why I told her to do it. And I did tell her. And so I'm on the phone and she says, Eva, why am I putting my feet on this mat every day? And so I asked her, how's the arthritis doing? And she thought for a second, she goes, oh, well, the pain's gone. I said, that's why you're doing it. So grounding can have fantastic effects for the ability to just calm the body down. The better is, of course, wet grass. And anywhere, the best situation is anywhere where natural land meets natural water. So what is that? A brook, a stream, an ocean. And that's why we feel so good when we go to the, any of those places on vacation. Okay. So grounding, it's an excellent way to get connected and feel good. Sauna therapy. Another item that is good, better, best. Everybody's heard about that 180 degree room that we go into at all this, the spas, you know, or even at the gym and you can't breathe. It's so hot. You get in there and you're just <gasps> out of breath, right? So it can have wonderful effects. Sauna has been around for thousands of years and people of all ages are able to do it. There's Roman times uh, they had the, the baths and have the saunas at that time. So people have known for centuries that saunas are fantastic for the body. Well, in recent years, they came out with something called the infrared sauna. And this is just a uh, small cedar box that has panels of the infrared light. Uh, they're, they're just little panels. And you plug in this room and it gets up to about 140 degrees. And the infrared rays, they enter the body at about an inch to an inch and a half. And what they do is they help circulation and heat up the body so that we can falsely raise the temperature of the body to kill off toxins, viruses, bacteria, infections. So really great way to detox and kick the body into gear for healing. Okay. Because as we get older, we lose the ability to have a fever. When was the last time you had a fever? Think about it, you know? And that has to do with the energy. So the more you build up the mineral energy of the body and give it a good foundation, the easier it is for us to overcome illness, okay? But the absolute best way, in my opinion, to detox is by using a near-infrared sauna. And what's the difference? Well, near-infrared is red light lamps, and they give you um, a room that's 120 degrees about, so it's a lot less, it's easier to sit in, right? You're still going to sweat. And these lights also help with your mood. So you're getting the red, the yellow, and the orange light rays that enter and bounce around off the room go into your eyes. And they can increase the serotonin. They can increase that happy feeling. They can make you feel good, right? So people who suffer from depression, they've been helped by this. 
okay? It also helps with the same thing that the regular infrared sauna helps with, getting rid of infections, increasing circulation. But these red lights are nice and warm and they penetrate into the body about three inches. So they really get to that stagnant blood in the center of the body. Okay, so that's a suggestion for the sauna. Then the last thing is rest. And I think we lose the distinction. It is not the same thing as sleeping. And it's the best thing to do is to listen to the body when it's tired. Lay down for a nap. In aerobics, we call it making the movement smaller. You know, it's not about going out and getting a cup of coffee. Be mindful of when you need rest and give your body some rest. And that's the last detox tip. And then before we close up things, I just want to explain the energy scale. If we were to imagine that the body had its amount of energy in a glass of water or equivalent to the glass of water. And ideally, we want that glass of water energy to be all the way topped off. Well, if we're using our energy up and we're not able to fully um, feel the effects of vibrant energy because we're not eating well enough or we're having raw foods or we're eating the wrong kind of water or drinking the wrong kind of water, then the energy level just drops and drops and drops. And we end up with a half glass. And as the glass becomes lower and lower, we start to see, you know, more signs or symptoms. And so think about that. It's like, oh, I didn't get to the age of 30 without allergies. It's that the body didn't ha it had enough energy prior to now to cover it up. Okay. So as we get older, we lose the energy, we see more symptoms. And that's the scales of energy. And then the very last thing I wanted to offer is for all of you on attendance here today, you get a free 45-minute consultation. Right down the website, selfnutritiononline.com, and you're going to see a little reserve, sorry, you're going to see a little pop-up and it says reserve your consultation. Take advantage of that. I'd love to talk to you about your more specific questions. Okay, Michelle. Wow, that was pretty awesome, Eva. So through applause, you are awesome. Thank you. I think, you know, we have a lot of questions coming okay. in and I love it. I mean, you know, one, I'm going to start off with one and that is how, how do we know that we're out of balance? I mean, is it just we don't feel right? Or are there some kind of really key symptoms that you can share? I mean, are we, you know, like the leaning tower of what you said? Pizza, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people feel similar things in fatigue. And somehow it's become this whole society driven, it's, it's somehow okay to feel tired. And if it's the tired at the end of the day of, wow, this has been a fantastic day, I'm ready for my sleep, that's one thing. But if you're hanging your head and you can't concentrate and this fuzzy ability or not ability to pull words out of the brain so that you can complete a sentence is happening. If you go from one room and you remember what you need, but then you go to the other room and you get there and you're like, uh, what did I need? Something's amiss. You know, it can be as simple as that, or it can be something physical. Like a lot of people get their nails done. Women do right. And we have ridges in our nails that can be an iron imbalance, or we have the little white spots in the nails that we cover up with our acrylics. And that's a zinc imbalance. Um, maybe you have wavy nails or they don't grow out. That's a calcium imbalance. So there's little clues wow. that are all over that we just need to pay attention to. And so is it with the, is the hair analysis, like why, why choose hair analysis? Are there other ways to kind of detox or get this analysis? I'm, I'm kind of curious because you talk about so much with the hair analysis. Is that the only way that really gives you a good perspective or it was um, the that's best. a question? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's a great question. And, and it's one that deserves a, a great answer. So with, there's blood tests, there's urine tests, there's feces, there's all kinds of tests, a spit test that can give you valid information for other issues. But especially with blood tests in comparison to the hair mineral analysis, because I think everybody's had their blood drawn, not everybody's done a, a saliva test. But when it comes to blood, if you were to imagine, you're only seeing what's going on in the body in a snapshot at that particular moment. You're not really getting to see what's going on at the gland level, meaning how much of the hormone is your body making, and is it getting into the blood? And then on the other side of the blood, there's the body. Like, is the body absorbing? Is it taking it in? Is it rejecting it? What's going on? And so with the blood, you can definitely see some serious medical conditions pop up. You can see what's going on with maybe liver disease or heart disease. You can see those things there. You can see that you have um, 
you know, a sugar imbalance. You can see if you have an infection going on, but you can't see those other things and you can't see a trajectory or a, or a, um, a trend that's going on in the body. Whereas with the hair, you're getting to see about a 30 days growth worth of information that tells us what the trend, overall trend is, what's going on with your adrenals, with your thyroid, really. And I, can I tell you the number of times I've had somebody say to me, oh, Eva, I just had my blood drawn and my, my, uh, my thyroid is working fantastic. I don't need anything fixed with that. And I'm like, well, we're looking at right. analysis. And right here it says to me that it's not working well. It's not working well overall. So we can see whether what's going on with the gland, the blood, and also the cells. So it gives you a more complete well, picture. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry, because I'm like, there's tons of questions coming in, but I want to kind of keep on this one for a minute with the hair analysis. Like, does that, do you, is part of the hair analysis when you do that, then do you develop a whole protocol and game plan for somebody and what they can do to kind of get back to balance? Is that the whole kind of Absolutely. focus here? Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, the, what I, it's what I call the reveal program. And the program includes, of course, your hair test and the consultation with how do I interpret the test. It's not like reading tarot cards. There's an actual, <laughs> like a system to reading it. And um, <laughs> from that, I can tell what are the best foods for you based on your oxidation rate. I can tell what, sup what minerals your body is needing right now. And so we, we, these are good supplements for the next you know, 90 days or so. And a lifestyle factors like we take into consideration what you're doing versus what the ideal is and try to come as close to the ideal as possible in a time frame that's comfortable for you and so most people need a program for about two years to reverse and really get back down to a good solid foundation and in order to keep your supplements up to date you retest every three to four months so your body changes wow and as it changes yeah then you retest so that's the program and it's meant to work really easily and in the background without changing too much of your day because it has to be feasible. It has to be easy to do. Um, and that's what I try to do with each of my clients individually, like whatever level they're at, I'm, I'm right there with them. I try to meet them where they are. So. I think what to me was the fa was fascinating the most is your focus. There was no focus on food. You know, that's what everybody always looks at is low fat, no fat, carbs, oh. no carbs. <clears throat> but yet you gave us some very different take. And so this leads into some questions. I, uh, one of them is going to be funny. So I, I think you'll love this comment. Here's one. Wow, you opened my eyes to the importance of getting enough water intake. <laughs> so I oh. thought that was really interesting because, you know, we're told we're supposed to drink so much water. I think yeah. that's where this question is going. But now it's like, okay, now I really need to see that. And, you know, there's another question that goes with water. And it said, you know, if I don't, how do I know it's hundred percent spring water? Oh, it's a, it's um, yeah, that's a tough one <laughs> because um, companies will say, and it, did you know that water bottles have an ingredient list on them? <laughs> Actually, I did not, to be yeah, honest. No, I yeah. didn't know that. So, okay. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. And so, I used to buy all the different types of waters and I, I, as part of one of my uh, petite retreats, and I would say, okay, let's read the water label and see what they say. So there are tests, if we were to Google water test spring water, and the different brands have to divulge where they get their water, how much percentage of their water total is in the water, because I think the number that allows for a water company to say, yes, it's a spring water, 3% of the total water just has to be spring. The rest of it can be municipal water. And that is out. Wow. Ages. Yeah, it's terrible. So I could give names. Um, would you, would you give names or do you choose <laughs> not to do that? I can. I'm curious because I can. you've got Costco, you've got, you know, different <laughs> yeah. varieties. What would be, what would be maybe this way? What would be two you would recommend that are uh, like awesome? Easy and easy, easy. So Trader Joe's, and they're all over Southern California, so they have great spring water. The other one, Crystal Geyser. Inexpensive, easy. Um, the other one that's great is Fiji water. Of course, that's more expensive, but oh, it's yummy. And yes. Fiji water has cool packaging, but I, yeah, so like yeah. the Costco water, you know, when they, so if they say, what'd you say about reverse osmosis? That was something you brought up as well, that that is not a good thing or it's there's not, another question on that. 
Yeah, no, I have um, watched people convert their homes to reverse osmosis over the years and then slowly watch their health degrade. And it's a demineralizing water. So even if they put minerals back in, how do you know it's the minerals that you need? And how do you know that it's a mimic of what would be in spring water? So, you know, spring water comes with um, kind of ratios of minerals based on where that spring is. And that matters to the body. So it's like it, it's carbon filtered is, is the safest, uh, easiest. The only thing that it typically doesn't get out is fluoride but there's a lot of spring waters that have fluoride in it too. A lot of well water has fluoride in it too. We've really done it to ourselves. And fluoride is a, not a nutrient and it's not good for us. It is a byproduct of metal making and it's considered a heavy toxin. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, here's another question and you're going to laugh again. It's like, I'm reading my water bottle now. <laughs> it, says puri it says purified by reverse osmosis. Bad, good. Not the best. Obviously uh, bad, right? Yeah, I would put it down, if you were to have a scale of green, like really great, and then red being not so good, like terrible, then reverse osmosis would be that red orange. I, I wouldn't drink, I don't drink it. In fact, if I know that somebody's offering me water to drink, I refuse it. <laughs> if it's reverse osmosis, that tells you. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Um, so more questions. Yes. Um, can you, um, this is a question, do I have to join a gym to go to a sauna? I don't know, no. there are options for people with saunas. Absolutely. It uh, just so happens that my dad and I make a near-infrared sauna that is portable. And you can take any enclosure, like an extra shower stall, or create a canvas enclosure in your home, and you can have it right there in your house. And they don't cost, I make them so that they don't cost very much, um, so that they're affordable and accessible to you, and you can use them where, you know, whenever you want, wherever you want, if you travel with it. Um, so you can and are these, these are in your home, you can do it. So I'm putting back up yeah. your contact information yes. on how to find you. Um, they can order it right from you is what you're saying. And you can use them in your home. Yes, both. So I make them. And in fact, I'm at my manufacturing plant right now, which is my dad's house. And we make them together. So I go out and I buy the materials at the local lumber yard and we assemble them. And then I, I sell them all over the world. I've sent them to Dubai, to um, gosh, Sweden, no one's going to Canada. So they're all over the world. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, very good. Um, here's another comment. You're going to laugh at this one. I'm glad to have approval for more massages. <laughs> 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 I was like, right on, man. I love that question. That one was pretty good. I'm yeah. like, check, check. Yep. I was thinking that too. Um, <laughs> here's a question. Can you explain more um, more details about what grounding is? I guess we have some confusion there on grounding. So grounding is the direct connection between you and the planet. But what it is, is a way for the body to get rid of the inflammation. It's really that simple. So we're, we're connecting to the physical part of the earth, whether that's dirt or wet cement or grass or you know, sand. So you got that part. It's the, what does it do to the body? It instantly connects you to the earth's energy charge, which is a negative and allows for the positive over the, the, uh, the part of our charge that, that um, becomes inflammatory and allows the body to negate that extra charge. And we can then reduce stress in the body, the stress response goes way down. And you'll feel it within three seconds, the body just kind of takes a deep breath on the inside and it goes, oh, whew, that feels so much better. And if you sit there for 20 minutes, no more than 20 minutes is really needed every day. And the body will start to use that time to detox. So it goes through and it detoxes, it gets rid of old toxins, old chemicals, viruses. It can do that very slowly. And it's not like you're being electrocuted. It's just in tapping into the natural charge. It's very, um, Innocuous, I think, is the word I want to use. No, great word. So do you have to be outside to do it, or can you give some more examples of what grounding would be just for our, our, our listeners and our I recommend audience? a product by earthing.com, and they have several products, and that's earth and then ing, so earthing.com. I don't sell the pads because they're, they're inexpensive enough to get right from earthing.com, and they have a great 
book that comes with your first order and it can be a mouse pad you know which is the universal mat or you can get sheets or you can get and what happens is so you have these different products that plug into the outlet you know the, the third grounding charge of your outlet throughout the house mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. plug plug it into that not it doesn't have a prong it just has the one plug for the the round the, the grounding portion of your of your circuit um, and it allows you to have the same effect as if you were outside. So you can have grounding pads, sheets, blankets. There's, a, I think, a new thing that uh, wraps around body parts. Uh, and I'll give you an example of how well that worked. I remember I bought myself a new pair of heels, and I'm walking along the MGM Grand, and they have that highly polished cement floor. Well, I bit the dust walking along, and I hurt the underside of my knee. And I drove home that night and I took my earthing pad and I wrapped it around my knee. And by morning, I no longer had pain or inflammation. And it was hurting the day before, I got to say. So it does some amazing things for healing. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if you said go to earth, I'm sorry, earth, earthing, say it again, the website. <clears throat> Earthing.com. Love it. Those are great. Yeah. Um, I think here's some other, <laughs> some of these are funny. Um, how many quarts are in an ounce of water? <laughs> oh, <laughs> how many ounces in a quart of water? I think is what they meant, right? Yeah. How many ounces in a quart? Um, you said so three quarts a day is what they said. Three quarts yeah. a day, which comes out to 96 ounces. And you know what I use? I have this really cool app, 96 ounces again. Um, that app is there's water your body and there's a couple of others that are great. And you can plug in 200 pounds for your body weight. And the, the calculation comes out to about 96 ounces. So it'll ask you what your weight is, but don't like lie to it. Put in 200 pounds, and then it will feed you a reminder every so often throughout the day to drink enough water. And you, you just, it'll, it'll, a little alarm will come up and it'll say it's time to drink, da -da 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 -da, like a glass of water getting full, you know? And then um, uh, you just punch in, oh yeah, I have my pint, or, you know, which is two cups. And that's what I find easiest. So I wake up in the morning and I drink a pint and then between breakfast and lunch, I drink another pint. That's a quart. And I think we got the message there. I don't think anybody said when to drink water. So you were talking about between meals is the best time, or it sounds like what you just said first thing in the morning. Yep. Is it good to drink a lot of water before you go to bed? What are some other maybe kind of recommendations you have about when to drink water? Most people, you want to get it in before dinner time. Only because if you're drinking closer to the end of the day and before you go to bed, now you're disturbing your sleep with needing to use the restroom. I Not to mention the end result that might happen if you drink too much water <laughs> at night. So <laughs> I'm just going there on that one. Yeah, Had to I go know. there. Let's be you serious totally now. Did. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can always get a depend, <laughs> I suppose. But no, it, it, this is. There it, you go. Yeah. I think the best solution is to cut off water drinking. I've only had a handful of people ever say to me, oh, no, you've it's not a problem for me to drink at night. I wake up in the morning and then I go just fine. But most people need to give their body a break overnight you know, drink up the rest of the, of the water they need between that lunch and dinner, and then don't drink anymore after that. Got it. I mean, here's another question. Somebody said, and this is great. My gosh, I can't believe all the questions. Um, we got another question. Somebody said, I've heard ginger is what I need to reduce inflammation. It's Thoughts? a, yeah, that, that's definitely something that can be added as a spice to foods. Um, it also helps digestion but it will not be a cure-all for inflammation as a total. So that would be um, an allopathic way to do it, like taking a medication as opposed to a whole systemic or holistic approach. And what I do specifically is holistic. Yeah. Got it. You're, you're gonna love this one too. <laughs> I'm cracking yes. up with these. Thank you for the great information. Question, is it pizza or pizza? <laughs> 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 okay, that's just a lame question, but I'm going to let you answer it because I was laughing when we got that one. I'm going, really? All right. I won't say who sent that one, but is it pizza or pizza? I think we'll go with pizza. What do you think? Pizza, the city pizza. in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> God, hysterical. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about how fatigue can be corrected. I mean, is it strictly just sleep or what are some of the things and the nuances of what you brought up that will help with fatigue? You well, know, cause I don't know a woman out there that doesn't have like grand fatigue, if I can call it a term. 
dehydration is a huge slowdown on the body. If we do, so think about what the body is made up of. We're supposed to be 75 to 80% water. And if we're not putting water into the body, but we are expressing it from somewhere, whether it's sweat or pee or whatever else that we're you know, doing, then how are we supposed to replenish? You know, so if the blood is made up and it has to be a certain viscosity in order to get through the body and pump through, it's going to slow down if we don't have enough water and that water intake as soon as we drink. But have you ever had your blood drawn first thing in the morning after not drinking all day and all night? Had a what? Had your blood drawn first thing in the morning? No. Uh, I, well, I don't know if you're asking me, but to yeah, everyone it, that's listening, I'm, I, they're nodding or saying <laughs> yes or no. Sorry about that. I was just that's jumping okay. in, doing my thing. <laughs> no, it's like perfect. you're talking to me, Ava. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, and it, it, the only reason I ask is my personal experience is if I have gone without water for more than 24 hours and I have my blood drawn, it takes forever. But if I drink water, oh. I blood, right? So you can see the effects like right then and there uh, when we're drawing our blood. So it's, it, it matters how much water we drink. Um, that will help yeah. energy levels. The other thing is um, take a rest. So our body has a natural rhythm of every 90 minutes or so where if we tap into that, get up from our desk, do a little stretching, walk around, get some water, um, use the restroom on a different floor and get a little bit of exercise so that blood gets circulated up to the brain so that we can think more clearly, then we can be more productive when we get back to our desk. It just takes five minutes. Love it. Two more questions and we're wrapped up. Okay. It's like, what, what is your opinion? The, the, the stand up desks, you know, for office environments desk. are all the rage. It's like yeah. opinion on that. Is it a good thing and not yes. so good thing? What do you think on that? I think it's a great thing. Um, I think we've all been or, or heard the whole fad about stretching on the airplane if we're sitting for too long and what that can do. So if, if you don't know, so if we're sitting for too long, we can create blood clots. Um, and the circulation just goes way down and there goes your circulation to the brain. Uh, so the more that we can move, and like I said, every 90 minutes, or if you're a fidgety person like I am, then get up, you know, work while you're standing. And then as your legs get tired, sit back down for a few minutes and then work some more. But um, yeah, I think they're fantastic. Uh, I think it's the next best thing. And if we can get more companies on board with that, and I do corporate wellness events, and I talk about that in the corporate wellness trainings, is talking with the corporate wellness coordinator to see about getting standing desks for more people so that they can feel and be more active throughout the day. Absolutely. I think that's cool. What do they say? I mean, sitting is now the new smoking, smoking. or something. I've <laughs> heard that as a Kinda. term. That's crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I seriously, this was awesome. I know that there's more in you, but I hope you will come back and be our thought leader again, because this was awesome. You are amazing as our thought leader today. Thank so thank you. You're welcome. For being on Women Lead Webinars. And to all of our attendees and viewers, it's like thank you for, you know, for joining us as we're going to be back again soon, um, actually in two weeks with our next Women Lead Webinar series on, on how you can lead, achieve, and succeed as a female leader in business. So thanks for joining us, and all of you have a wonderful day.